Somebody might say, okay, if urge is so dangerous, if this type of desire is so dangerous, then why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create it in us in the first place? Isn't he setting us up for failure? And then Allah subhanahu wa responds, he said, no, because it's only dangerous if we let it go and if we neglect it. And that neglecting it, letting it go, comes from a sense of entitlement that we shouldn't have to do anything, which is ridiculous. And it exposes your immorality in the first place. But if we master it, then this is actually the tool and one of the primary tools to get to, to get to paradise. Um, and Aragba Sahani points out here that there's this really, really interesting connection between our urge, our shahwa, and our ibadah, right? And this is linking up the two kind of levels of purpose, the first two levels of purpose, imadatul ardu, ibadatul rahman, because our worship comes from mastering these urges, right? Either in the responsible use of them, think about um, how much we eat. Okay, if we are responsible with our food, we don't waste, we eat halal, right? We're being selective. We have this urge, it's very, very strong, but we're not going to just let it run wild. It has to have limits. And so when we apply the limits, and then even we do extra acts of worship, such as Yom Arafah, right? We, we fast, we leave food, we deprive this urge, okay? Then this is something that is actually exactly links up to worship. Our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by interacting with this urge that we have by occasionally depriving it, or when we indulge it, by indulging it within limits, right? So this is the primary reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to us, is that this is actually, if we didn't have the urge, we would lose all that opportunity for worship. We wouldn't have anything that we had to uh, be judicious with or be uh, have discretion with, when to use it and when to not, when to indulge it and when to not, how to indulge it, why to indulge it, and eventually, or occasionally I should say, to let it go, to do without in order to grow spiritually. That's the first reason. The second reason is because the language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to communicate paradise to us is through these urges and desires. And I say that while realizing that the things that are in Jannah, nobody really understands, right? These things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the foods and about the drinks and even about the, the spouses or the mates or whatever you want to call it in Jannah, they are meant to motivate us to get to paradise. It's not to say that the things that we find there are going to be exactly the same things here. No, it's a completely different existence. But our experience of desire, our experience of thirst and of arousal and these sorts of things and hunger makes us understand a little bit through analogy, even though the degree is very, very different, the pleasures that await us in paradise and help motivate us to get there.